We're in Psalms 59. We were on Psalms 58. I know because I wrote down glory message, helicopter. That's my going out of town message. Amen. Amen. I'm going to blow everything out. <clears throat> so, he says, deliver me from my enemies, O oh my God, defend me from them that rise up against me. Father, we love you. Thank you for being so good to us. I pray, God, you'd help us tonight. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen, amen. You can have a seat. I hate to start the conversation or the sermon with spiritual enemas, but that's where we wind up this morning. Brother Thompson uh, believed in cleansing. He believed that uh, you need to be clean. And uh, every once in a while, you're going to need that. Yeah. You're going to need a cleansing. Amen. And uh, you need a spiritual cleansing. Amen. And uh, that's just part of it. That's why we go to camp meetings. That's why we go to revival meetings. That's why we have meetings. Uh, this particular year... I will pretty much stay home most of the time. Uh, June will be probably won't you will not see me much here, but the rest of the year you will. And uh, I can tell you this: that when you're sick enough, and you're sick of being sick, you'll pretty much try anything. That woman that was spent all her money on doctors and had a blood issue, and she spent all her money, she finally put the hem, put her hands on the hems of the Lord, and the Lord said, and he could feel that virtue had come out of him. And he said, Who touched me? And everybody's looking around, spirit, you know, physically. Don't you see all these people touching you? Right. Uh, it wasn't the people. Someone had touched him spiritually. And they drew virtue. For his stripes are we healed. Amen. Every time they took the cat of nine tails... And beat our Lord. Those. That pain. And that agony. And those stripes. Were there. So that you could be cured. Of the ailments of life. Now I'm not talking about. You know. I bump my big toe on the bed. Amen. Amen. But he did die. And he died in those stripes so that we could be healed. And uh, in this life that we live, in these short days to come, it's going to be more and more wicked every day. And you're going to need all the help you can get. All the help. Amen. The first church that he deals with in the book of Revelations, he said, the first problem, he said, you have left your first love. And he said, well, what are you talking about? She's right here. I go to church every day. She's right there. 
He said, well, you might be with her. You might have conversations with her. But that doesn't mean you're in love anymore. Right. Just because you're nice to one another, just because you tolerate one another. Amen, there's, there's a whole difference about being in love. Yes, sir. See, some people, men are stupid. Let, let, let's start there, okay? Yeah. Okay. I knew I'd get an amen from the women. Amen. Did you did you hear that, Dan? Did you get all them amens, you know? Did you write down names? Amen. I mean, all them women say the same thing. You know, you're absolutely right. You know why? Because they're the last ones that know anything. They don't even realize when there's problems. They don't know. They haven't a clue. You know, they think I provide a I provide a place for you to stay, I provide a vehicle for you to drive, I provide food for you to eat, I put there's clothes. Yeah. I got everything that you need. Right. There's only one problem. There's no love. And you think, well, everything's always been the same way it's always been. Mm. Well, that's because you're thinking again. There you go. And the greatest thing that you have, the greatest thing that you have, if you're married, is your mate. And she may smile at you, she may appreciate you, but on the inside, she's bitter. Just because of the way you've treated her. God gets that way too. Here you are Sunday night. You think you're doing you're doing your very best to please God. I'm here, man. I'm here. What more you want? Come on now. I'm here. Anybody else here? You see anybody else around here? No, I'm here. You know what the Lord said? But are you in love with me? Well, I'll do anything you want. That's not what I asked. I said, are you in love with me? Well, I'll give you anything you want. That's not what I said. I said, are you in love with me? So he told that first church, he said, he said, you lost your first love in the book of Revelations. And they didn't understand it. Sort of like some of you. You got the greatest thing in the world. You got a God that loves you. A church that loves you. You got a pastor that loves you. And cares for you. David is in chapter 59. Let's do some reviewing. Be merciful to, to me, unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighteth daily. Psalms 56. Psalms 57, be merciful unto me, O God, oh, be merciful unto me. For my 
Soul will trust in thee, yea, in shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge unto thee, unto these calamities be overpassed. The problems have not disappeared. He's in chapter number 59. You know what he's saying? I guess that means things haven't changed. He's in the same boat that he was in chapter 50, uh, 56. I need deliverance. I need you, Lord, to defend me. Rise up against, amen, uh, uh, against, rise up against me. Oh, my God, defend me from them that rise up against me. Lord, I need your help. I need your protection. They're rising up faster than I can shoot them down. Amen. Them guys... They was at the Alamo, and they shot a bunch of them, killed a bunch of them. They said, man, we're having a pretty good day today. Everybody, you know, back slapping each other. Man, we would shoot them down. We, we was doing it. We had a good day today, didn't we? Everybody's going, yeah, we did. And then the next day, guess what happened? There was more outside. There's a bunch of more, amen? I mean, there's a bunch of them. You ever play that game with the stick, you know, and they just keep coming up? Whatever the game is, and the enemy just keeps keep popping up, and it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, amen, until finally you lose because there's so many. That's the whole purpose of the game, by the way. I hate to tell you that. Is for you to lose. Amen. They just keep popping up. So David's at the point now that he says, Lord, I need your help. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from the bloody men. I need deliverance. I need deliverance Amen. from my enemy. People will envy you. You say, I have nothing. You have God. Amen. People think, you know, it's just money. People envy, you know, just money. No, it's your walk with God. And so David has to say, Lord, I need deliverance. I need deliverance because, frankly, amen, these are bloody men. And they want to kill me. They want to hurt me. There are people in this world, from this world the other world that want to hurt you. Amen. And they will do anything and everything they can to hurt you. Amen. Deliver me from the bloody men. For lo, they lie in wait. You say, what does that mean? Ambush. For my soul, the mighty are gathered, or gather my soul, the mighty are gathered against me, not for, for my transgressions, not for my sins, O Lord. He said, they're hiding out, they're doing guerrilla warfare. Amen. World War II, you know what a sniper's job was? 